Hello everyone, I thought I would try something a little bit different rather than just posting pictures and adding a little text. I thought I would do a little voiceover to a slideshow uh, showing uh, all the frames being installed on the Strongback. Work here, I think it kind of has a little delay happening. There we go. Okay, so here you can see my, uh, my Strongback happening. I have uh, frame P installed, which is uh, back over here. And uh, some of the other frames are kind of up over in this area here. Um, I used Alan's uh, layout for the uh, strong back and everything worked out excellent. Uh, there was a couple of adjustments and I'll get to those uh, in a few minutes. So as we move along, I started uh, with back frame, frame P, and I continued up from the aft end moving forward. Uh, you can see there uh, frame A installed, and these supports are there for, well, I'll call it frame S for the slant. It didn't really have a name yet, but we'll call it S, which is leaning up against the wall over there as well. So everything worked out pretty good here. Um, the only thing is you could kind of see here that this support doesn't go all the way up to the edge of the frame. Now normally there is a piece of plywood which would be your watertight bulkhead on there. Uh, because of my limited resources in plywood I had to not put that on. So I guess if, uh, if I had to do those pieces again I would extend them. So if you need to do that uh, or you want them extended up to the framework rather than screwing them through, through the plywood um the drawing calls out for those pieces to be 1370 millimeters so if you made them 1540 that would work out perfect and they would actually hit that framework and without uh, being in the way for the plywood afterwards uh, my little setup i think i put it in my last posting was i used a laser level which projected a vertical and horizontal line uh, this worked out really well you can see that in some, some photos coming up. Um, the horizontal line projected my, my uh, water line on all the frames, which gave me a nice horizontal line to match up to, as well as the vertical line, which was the center line of the boat. And uh, it worked out really well up until when I got too far forward and some of the frames were shading or shadowing the uh, the aft ones, but in this frame, in this picture, you can see them really hitting the, uh, the center lines. And then, coincidentally enough, I didn't realize it, but I actually have it right on the center line of my overhead door. So that was pretty interesting. So uh, frame S, a uh, little bit of messing around getting the the actual proper height of that based on waterline length uh, or the waterline. Um, height measurements uh, because there was no waterline measurement on this frame. Uh, so anyways I got it and you can see here I left these a little bit longer because I wasn't exactly sure whether the, the measurement on the drawings uh, was, was good. Uh, it did say uh, field fit so I thought I can always make it shorter it's a little harder to make it longer. So, so S is sitting in there it's not fully uh, screwed down yet but other photos you can see that. So as we move ahead uh, you can see here this is D1 installed. Um, everything on again on Alan's drawing or his layout that he gave us uh, was precise and accurate. Frame D and frame E uh, installed on the uh, on the strong back. Uh, here's an idea of the uh, center lines. You can really see it here, the vertical line. Uh, I did notch out this one to suit the, uh, the framework that I had posted in a previous uh, posting. But you can see here the vertical, the horizontal line works out really well, and it actually catches uh, D1, D, and E all at the same time. And it just touches it there as well. So I got some of the... Um, the stem attached, uh, I think they call these the king beams. And I also added in some other framework just to kind of keep this nice and square. Uh, so 
so that my center line of my boat all stayed secure as I was as I was putting this together and that'll help uh, when I go to put the longitudinal framing along all these pieces as well. Some extra little bits, I'll have lots of framework or lots of uh, pieces of material uh, laying around as well. <clears throat> uh, this is something I did to kind of keep frame S horizontal. I put a long board across it. Uh, my thinking was that um, this needs to be nice and parallel or level, I guess, uh, bottom of the boat as well. So I laid that in there as well as I use this as a reference. Uh, this one just kind of shows some of the framework and how the longitudinal framing has to bend and twist, which uh, proved to be quite the uh, bit of a challenge. So obviously I'm building this by hand and I'm going to be cutting all my longitudinal notching into the frames by hand, which is quite the treat. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, as I was going through the frames, as I was attaching them to the strong back, I didn't have B and C in there. So my initial thinking was I was going to put the piece of plywood, uh, fit it in as per the drawing from Alan. Um, but as I got to the bow, then I realized that I think I'm just going to use the vertical supports just like... Um, just like the rest of the frames. So these ones, um, I kind of used, what did I do here? Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so I used some longer pieces of two by fours that I had. So, and I really didn't know the length that I needed. So I just left them long and cut them later. But for those of you that need to do this, that are building by hand and, and, um, and are not gonna use the plywood that goes in between here, uh, these lengths might, be handy for you. So um, on both frame B, which would go in here, and frame C, the supports that you need are 1590 millimeters long, and that's right from the bottom of the framework if you use Alan's drawing. So 1590 will give you good support in, um, in frame C and frame B to catch all the nice framework. That might be helpful helpful to someone. Uh, so now, yeah, you can see frame B in there, which is that partial frame, and I just put a little piece of timber across there just to hold it nice and uh, nice and straight throughout the process. Um, I think this was um, something that Janice had in his um, in his details on the blog was. Uh, he routered the edges of the longitudinal framing before he installed them. And that makes sense. Uh, router them, sand them, get them all nice and smooth along the length. And it's a lot easier to do now while they're in this state than uh, while they're on the boat. And then you're trying to uh, be inside the boat and sanding them uh, while everything else, while the plywood's on, for instance, uh, stuff like that. So it's better to do them. I use the three mil. A uh, radius cutter on a router, and it seemed to go pretty quick. So that's the end of my uh, little video. Uh, hopefully you found it informative. If you have any questions, just leave them um, on the blog, and I will try and respond as quickly as possible. Thank you.